So with the patient prone, the stick I use is an arthroscopic switching stick. The tip of the stick is the midline and it's parallel to the disc place. Um, you get this image and you can see on the AP image, the tip of the switching stick is in the midline. We just draw that line. We now know that's the midline. This is someplace out here is where we're gonna go with our needle and we're gonna stay parallel to that line to target the foramen. We then get a lateral view, place the switching stick to the very front of the disc space, parallel to the disc again. Um, and you'll see under the lateral fluoroscopic shot that the, the switching stick goes all the way to the front. We now have two lines, 90 degrees to each other. Uh, which we will draw on the skin. These two 90 degree lines define a plane that bisects the foramen and targets the Kamen's triangle exactly where you want. So that stick is now perpendicular to the x-ray. We grab the stick where the dorsum of the skin is, and then we go that distance from midline outward, and that tells you your starting spot. So just to kind of confirm, we, we're going to measure after we make all these lines, and you can see that this guy's kind of a big guy, and he's L3-4, and we're almost 11 centimeters out from midline, um, which is a little bit more lateral than you probably would be on a very small female, but he basically told us where to put the needle based on his size and body habitus. So now what we'll do is prep and drape this area. Uh, if this were an endoscopic approach, we'd have the full Joymax bag with the water bags. Um, you anesthetize the skin at the mark uh, because I know that's where I'm going to go with the needle and the endoscope. Um, if I was doing an endoscopic discectomy here, I would actually make my incision. Since this is a transframal epidural, I use a 20 gauge six inch needle. For the endoscopic procedure, we use an 18 gauge needle so that the guide wire will fit down the uh, needle and insert into the foramen. And our target is going to be the lateral aspect of the facet joint. We want to go dorsal and medial to the exiting three root, land on the lateral aspect of the facet, ideally where the facet and joint capsule converge and the intertransverse ligament converges, and then skive off the ventral part of the facet into the frame and into the Kamen's triangle. So you'll see here, I will tell the patient, hey, you're going to feel a little pressure at your side. You tell me if you feel pain go down your leg. You can say, brace my hand against the side of the body. I use two hands and advance the needle. And boom, I followed the two lines, kept the needle parallel to both lines, and we're right on target for the facet. So I can feel a little resistance there. I know I'm in the facet capsule. I might be skiving off bone a little bit, but I'm also very, uh, very far from the medial particular line. So I'm still safe if I advance the needle a little bit. So you never want to go medial to medial particular line without checking your lateral. But since we're far away enough, I can advance a little bit. And I get some feedback that I've got some resistance there. So I'm, I can feel I'm skiving bone and pushing through the facet capsule, which is very thick and fibrous. So I've got some resistance. And I'm, I'm now about to the midpoint of the foramen on the AP. So we're going to check the lateral. So you need both AP and lateral to be sure where the tip of the needle is. And you can see under the lateral view, the tip of the needle is at the pars, about where the articular surface of the L4 superarticular process is. So we're not quite into the foramen yet. Um, the tip of the needle is actually in the facet joint, basically in the facet joint capsule, skiving off the bone. So we're going to use that bevel pointed downward to skive. If we turn the bevel posteriorly, it will dig into the facet. With it going downward, it'll skive and go ventral to the facet. I now advance the needle a little bit more. Again, two hands and very gentle, and I can feel a little pop. That little pop is going through the facet joint capsule. And now under the lateral view, you can see I'm ventral to the superarticular process of L4 in the foramen, um, at least on the lateral view. So now I'm going to check my AP to see how medial I am, because I can't tell from this view how medial I am. And you can see under the AP view, I'm basically at the medial particular line. So uh, the traversing route is just medial to this. I'm going to advance the needle a little further here, uh, because if you're doing, for instance, a post lateral herniation, you could advance this easily ventral to the traversing for root so that when you put your endoscope in, you're basically staring up at the inner surface of the root and looking directly at the disc herniation. So uh, at this point, I would advance the needle till I just feel the slightest bit of resistance. I want to touch the annulus. I don't want to puncture it. If you had a contained posterior lateral herniation, you may decide to go ahead and advance the needle into the annulus a little bit and anchor that guide wire in the annulus that makes it a little bit more stable when you're doing your reaming and your um, cannula placement.